Well, I think I have a big advantage, but it's certainly a three-person race, and uh, you have a couple of other people that are very talented there, too. So uh, we have a we have a five-man race, and I think that uh, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be not easy. I have a big advantage, but long way from being one. The leading Republican presidential candidate has suddenly turned humble, or as humble as Donald Trump could be expected to become, stating that he indeed does have a big lead, but it's no guarantee of a nomination. The numbers do bear it out, because if one were to be honest and look at the numbers, South Carolina was still a six-man free-for-all. Nevada will be down to five. And despite winning the state with 32 percent of the vote, that also means some 67 percent of the electorate in South Carolina cast ballots against Donald Trump. So how does he win them over? Or does Trump really care as long as the runners-up keep beating and destroying and hammering each other back and forth over and over again? Welcome back to former Libertarian vice presidential nominee, author of The Power of Relentless, and a solid supporter of Donald Trump, Wayne Allen Root. All right, Wayne, you are the big supporter of Donald Trump, so let's get right to that question right there. Donald Trump won big in South Carolina, but that's still two-thirds of the electorate there that said they don't want Donald Trump. How does he, how does he get him? Well, he hasn't spent any money yet, Ed. I no, mean, no, no, wait a minute. I got a Wayne, million Wayne, dollars. Wayne, I'm so going to hold you. Hang on, Wayne. I'm going to hold win. you. I'm going to hold you on topic today because I love you when you get passionate about this. <laughs> but get right well, to it. He, not, not about the money. How does he win them? But, but it is about the money. And what I'm trying to say to you is he won by a landslide number without spending any money. So if he starts to spend serious money and not just rely on nothing but media and social media, I think that he wins over the electorate. Look. Money wins politics, Ed. In every race in history, this will be the first time in history that the game plan has been rewritten if Donald Trump never spends any money. Well, that's the point, though, Wayne. That's the point, though. Somewhere along the line, he's going to have to spend money. Money does not win, because look at what Jeb Bush has spent. Look at what Ted Cruz has spent. You're you're basically contradicting yourself right here. (laughs) No, I'm not. I'm saying with all the money they spent, they got nowhere. With just pure personality, wonderful personality, Donald Trump won the race spending nothing, but eventually it does come down to money. Don't tell me that money doesn't win, Ed, when Barack Obama spent over a billion dollars both times. You have to spend money to win an election, and Donald Trump is the one who I've liked from day one because I always knew that he's self-funded and could spend a billion dollars. So far, he hasn't spent anything. Okay, I'm going to give you that. To spend, he will. I'm going to give you that, but again... Let's take the money out of it. He spends the money right. then, has the, has the commercials, goes out and does everything. Two-thirds of the people in South Carolina still voted against him. What does he say to them? What is the platform? What does he go to them with in substance that makes those people say, i got to have Trump in the White House? Well, I mean, there's a thousand things. I mean, I, I give lots of advice to Donald Trump. I have no idea how much he takes. I hear some <laughs> of it uh, occasionally. When, when I hear him open his mouth, something comes out that sounds reasonably like my advice. So let me give you a few things. First of all, I believe he's won the GOP nomination, whether he acts humble about it or not. I believe he's won and he needs to stop criticizing Ted Cruz and Marco Rubio or anybody else that's still in. He needs to go after Hillary Clinton, Hillary Clinton, Hillary Clinton and paint her as a criminal who will be under indictment soon. And if she's not under indictment, it'll just be because it was a political fix. And the more you say that, the more her likables go down and down and down. So I guess what I'm trying to tell you is you think the majority don't like Donald. I think Donald wins because the person he's against is completely unlikable. Well, no, wait a minute. So I'm not sorry, saying that the majority doesn't him. like him. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that in South Carolina, two-thirds still voted against him. And again, as they drop out, every candidate has a chance then to come in and capture those who decide that they now have to stay Republican and conservative. 90 seconds. The Donald wants to take a tougher stance against America's enemies. Now, you talked about the things he needs to do. At a rally this weekend, he told a story about U.S. General Pershing and what he did in the Philippines. Here's what he said. He took 50 bullets and he dipped them in pig's blood. And they shot 49 of those people. And the 50th person, he said, you go back to your people and you tell them what happened. And for 25 years, there wasn't a problem. Wayne, this has gone around the Internet for decades. There is absolutely no historical fact to it whatsoever. It never happened. It's been proven. Doesn't Mr. Trump then have to start telling people the truth and stop telling stories like this? Won't that make him a better candidate? Yeah, Mr. Trump is aggressive. Mr. Trump goes after him. Mr. Trump's always on the attack. And the result of that is it's gotten him very far. And I don't think you're ever going to change that about Donald Trump. So occasionally, Ed, some of the things he say might be proven wrong. Occasionally, he might have to go back on something. Occasionally, 
He might say something and then correct himself later. But in the end, I think we want a candidate who shoots from the hip and who attracts people's attention and who gets headlines and who is, this is how I describe Donald, the uber of conservative politics. We would not have won with a traditional candidate like Ted Cruz. I don't think you can win with a Marco Rubio who reminds me of Mitt Romney, too moderate, wouldn't win. We needed a perfect uber candidate who disrupts politics and who does things in a different way. And you'll just have to accept okay. the fact that occasionally something comes out that isn't perfect. Five seconds. Are you going to stand on Donald Trump winning by double figures in Nevada? Yes, double digits in Nevada. Big we're going to come back and we're going to talk to you about it. Wayne, anything else? You always have passion, my man. I'm going to give you that. Wayne Allen Root, thanks so much for joining us. So where is all the Wall Street money funneling to this political season? Which candidate is it going to? We'll check the balance sheets on that and a whole lot more when we continue right here on this edition of The Hardline.